Hi, in this module, this is the concept of directive method. Actually, in this method, begins with the formula or rules or generalizations and apply it to, part, to a particular case. Deductive method is based on detection. In this approach, we proceed from general to particular and from abstract and concrete. At first, the rules are given and then the students are asked to apply these rules to solve the more problems. This approach is mainly used in algebra, geometry and trigonometry because different relations, laws and formulas are used in these sub-branches of mathematics. In this approach, help is taken from assumption, postulates and axioms of mathematics. It is used for teaching mathematics in higher classes. Deductive approach proceeds from general rule to specific instance, unknown to known, abstract to concrete, complex to simple. Now, I am going to concentrate the steps involved in deductive method. Deductive approach in teaching follows the four steps given for effective teaching. Step number one, clear recognition of the problem. A clear recognition of the problem statement provides the basic link for the thinking process and the solution to the problem. Then step number two, search for a tentative hypothesis. The second step in directive method is the search for a tentative hypothesis, a tentative solution to the problem. Step number three, formulating of a tentative hypothesis the search for the solutions leads to the formulations of tentative hypothesis that appears to have promise as a possible or probable solution to the problem. The tentative hypothesis has its basis on certain axioms or postulates or proportions or rules and formula that have been accepted to be true. Verification. It's a last step. Finally, the hypothesis that has been formulated is to be verified as the right solution to the problem at hand. Now, I will highlight some of the examples in directive method. Okay. Now, I am going to teach the directive method examples. Actually, that I take the first example. Find a power 2 into a power 10 is equal to 1. Actually, directive means, it comes from the word detection. Actually, it leads from general to particular. Therefore, first I take the general formula, general rule. That general rule is a power m into a power n is equal to a power n plus n. We already know this formula. It's a formula. That's why I take as a 1. Then we apply the formula in this particular examples. Therefore, a power 2 into a power 10. Here, m is equal to 2 n is equal to 10. Therefore, a power 2 plus 10 is equal to a power 12. Therefore, I saw the particular example in, in, the, in the use of general concept. Therefore, it is called as directive method. Next, I am moving the second example. Find 1 or 2. The whole square is equal to 1. Actually, I can split the 1 or 2 as 100 plus 2 the whole square. Actually, it is in the form of a plus b the whole square. We already know the formula a plus b the whole square. Therefore, first I take the general formula. a plus b the whole square is equal to a square plus 2ab plus b square. Here, a is equal to 100, b is equal to 2. Then, we apply the formula in this particular example, therefore, that particular concept here, 100 square, 100 plus 2 the whole square is equal to 100 square plus 2 times of 100 into 2 into b square, sorry, plus b square 2 square. Therefore, 100 square 10,000. 100 square 10,000, then 2 into 100 into 2, 400, plus 2 square is equal to 4. Therefore, final answer 10,404. Do you understand the concept of directive method? Thank you. This video looks at the area, the perimeter, and the volume of some circular shapes. Some of the basic terms we're going to be using are as follows. The first one we'll be looking at 
is the radius. The radius is the distance from the centre of the circle to the outside of the circle. Okay, and it doesn't matter where you talk, talk about on the outside of the circle, the distance from, distance from the middle to the outside is always the same. The next one we're going to be looking at is the diameter. The diameter describes the distance across the span of the circle. And what you probably realise is this is the twice the distance of the radius. The next one we'll be using is the circumference. The circumference is the same as saying the perimeter of a circle, and it's a distance around the outside of a circle. The final thing we're going to be using is this Greek letter pi. Pi equals 3.14, okay, and its symbol is a showing. And this constant number, 3.14, you'll be using a fair bit when you're working with circles. So, first off, we'll have a look at the area. Okay, so the area of a circle is pi r squared, which means pi times r times r. So we'll consider where we have a radius of 5 centimetres. Substituting the value in area equals pi times 5 squared, which equals 3.14 times 5 times 5, which multiplying these out gives us an answer of roughly 78 centimetres squared. Okay, let's have a look at another example. In this example, we have a radius of 11 metres. So, we'll substitute in the values. So the area equals pi times 11 times 11. This equals 3.14 times 11 times 11, which equals 380.13 metres squared. Okay, so when working in area, it's just a simple matter of substituting the radius into that formula pi r squared. Next, we'll have a look at the circumference. So, as you remember, the circumference is the same as saying the perimeter of a circle. It's the distance around the outside. The circumference equals 2 pi r. Once again, it's just a matter of substituting in the values. So, so the radius is 9 centimetres. The circumference would equal 2 times pi times 9, which equals 2 times 3.14 times 9, which, when you calculate it, is 56.55 centimetres. Have a look at another example. So in the next example, we have a diameter which is 9 centimetres. Okay, so we have to work out what the radius is. The radius is going to be half the diameter, so half of 9 is 4.5 centimetres. And we just substitute this into the formula. So circumference is 2 times pi by 4.5, which is 2 times 3.14 by 4.5, which gives us an answer of 28.28 centimetres and that's the circumference. The next thing we'll look at is working at the volume of a cylinder. When considering the volume of a cylinder, rather than give you a big fancy formula, first off I'm going to just get at you to consider the different parts. Now, the area of the circle part of a cylinder, like we've already seen is pi r squared. The other thing we deal with is the height. So how do we use these two to work at the volume of a cylinder? Well, the volume, put quite simply, is the area of the circle times the height. So, you could work that out in formula very easily. So, the area is pi r squared, so the volume is pi r squared times the height. So, let's use this to work out the volume of a few different cylinders. First off, let's work on where we've got a radius and a cylinder of 4 centimetres and a height of 11 centimetres. So, what we'll do is I'll shade in the circle part and leave the other height part blank just so you can separate the two for starters. So pi r squared is 3.14 by 4 by 4, the height is still times 11, so equals 50.27 times 11, so you times all this together and you get 552.92 centimetres squared. I'll have a look at another example here, and once again I'll show it again. Here we have a diameter of 12 metres and a height of 17 metres. So the radius is going to be half of the diameter, which is 6 metres. We'll substitute this in. Pi r squared is 3.14 by 6 by 6 times 17. Working this out, this equals 1310 times 17. So the volume of the cylinder is 1922.65 metres cubed. So anyway, to sum it all up, first off, the area of a circle is pi r squared, where pi is 3.14, r is the radius. The circumference of a circle, the perimeter, is 2 pi r. The volume of a cylinder is basically the area pi r squared times the height. So 
So I hope you can work that out. You should do well with circular shapes. Okay, good luck with that. Bye. Next, I am going to some of the merits of directive method. Merits. It is short and time saving method. It is suitable for all topics. This method is useful for revision and reward. There is use of learner's memory. It is very simple method. It helps all types of learners. It provides sufficient practice in the application of various mathematical formula and rules. The speed and the efficiency increase by the use of this method. Next, I am highlighting some of the demerits of directive method. Demerits. It is not psychological method. It is not easy to understand. It does not impart any training in scientific method. It is not suitable for beginners. It enhances cramming. It puts more emphasis on memory. Students are only passive listeners. It is not for quite suitable for the development of thinking, reasoning and discovery. Conclusion. Intention and detection are not opposite modes of thought. There can be no intention without detection and no detection without intention. Inductive approach is a method for establishing rules and generalization and deriving formula whereas deductive approach is a method of applying the detected results and for improving skills and efficiency in solving problems. Hence, a combination of both inductive and deductive approach is known as inductive deductive approach is most effective for releasing the desired goals. This approach is suitable for giving practice to the students in applying the formula or principles or generalization which has been already arrived at. This method is very useful for fixation and retention of facts and rules as it provides adequate drill and practice. Thank you.